What's going on Raiders, this is Hisasuke, and today we're taking a look at Lycus Dion, aka Intergalactic Son of a Bitch, aka The Red Wolf, aka that crazy son of a thousand dingoes. You get the picture. He's outlived most people who've come across him, and his legend will most likely outlive Lycus himself. He's one of the first Raiders players we'll have access to, and he offers an easy to learn but difficult to master playstyle, with combat mechanics revolving around his variable kinetic shield. Lycus brings to the table aggressive frontline capabilities with his high health pool and momentum based tactics. His unique ability is a bulletproof shield that can block most hit scan based projectile damage such as enemy assault rifles, shotguns, sniper rifles, and even turrets. The shield can be used to lead the charge on enemies and close the gap on long range engagements. The shield can also be used to watch your back when interacting with objectives or to protect teammates that are exposed. The kinetic shield is kept charged through physical movement, and keeping it fully charged will require Lycus to stay mobile. The shield can be used while standing still, but it'll drain fast. Using your shield only when necessary will allow you to maintain constant shield charge and keep enemies guessing whether or not you have it available. Try dropping the shield during executions, iframes, and outside of combat engagements in order to manage its capacity. And just some side notes regarding the ability just so you're not caught off guard. Lycus's kinetic shield does not protect him from Ginevra's crossbows, AoE based damage weapons like the Raceheim or pretty much anything Hans or Loth bring to the table. It's also vulnerable to push status effects such as the Told Shock or the S Bogan. Knowing what weaponry you can counter is important to how you push up on enemies, so know your matchups. Lycus brings along an assortment of deadly hardware from his travels around the galaxy. Focusing primarily on revolver and shotgun weapon types, his first weapon and immediately accessible gun is the Dolores. <laughs> when you play Lycus for the first time, this weapon can be a turn off. It's arguably his worst gun, and the inconsistency in damage as well as the close quarters requirement puts Lycus in dangerous situations, and not the fun kind. The weapon's fire rate emulates that of a sawed-off shotgun, and can be built towards caliber, lethal, and effective. It also applies a nice little knockback CC which can help when in a pinch. The Dolores isn't a bad gun per se, it's just not as viable or versatile as the rest of his kit. Next up is Shit Happens. This gun got his nickname from a bet Lycus made with one of his favorite gunsmiths, who wagered a barrel of dark deep licorice beer that Lycus couldn't survive a firefight with this heavy, unwieldy, and unpredictable piece of junk. Upon Lycus' return unscathed, the gunsmith shrugged and said, Shit happens. Keep this in mind when using the weapon. It wasn't built so much for efficiency as it was to get the user killed. As a result, the weapon comes with a gimmick. With each shot fired of the four round clip, the gun's primary damage segment will move clockwise. You'll have to manually adjust for each shot fired in order to keep a consistent damage output. You are fucking kidding me! I know, it sounds weird and it is weird. But the simplest way to put it is to move your aiming reticle in a circle while shooting. It takes some getting used to and actually has a nice flow to its mechanic once you get the hang of it. Like the Dolores, it also has CC properties and can outright stun, stagger, or push opponents with each individual shot. Shit Happens can be built towards Caliber, Quick Fingers, and Lethal. His third weapon is the Spinning Coin. You ever played Dead Space? This weapon kinda works like Isaac's Plasma Cutter, featuring a variable fire mode that alternates between vertical shots for high damage on a single target, or horizontal spreads that clear groups of adds more efficiently. This weapon's got versatility, and its situational elements make it a great weapon to work towards. Spinning Coin can also be built towards Caliber, Quick Fingers, and Automatic. Last and not least is the Pepper Pot. This weapon is a relic of Lycus' Biker Gang days. The weapon's first shot travels the furthest and with the most narrow spread, with the second and third widening the reticle. This weapon's critical capabilities are outright insane, and often one-shot raiders, war dogs, and Haiti soldiers alike. Its presence alone can deter players from coming in for a finisher due to its high damage and unpredictable crits. Pepper Pot can be built towards effective and lethal, and that's pretty much all you're going to see people building it as. Like most raiders, Lycus's cards are entirely situational, and should vary based on what tool you're bringing to the job. However, a good starter set that I found proves valuable in almost all scenarios includes Spiral of Psychotic Violence for the Faction card which increases weapon damage by 80% for 5 seconds after a finisher, maxing out at 200% with 5 stacks. Because you'll be getting in close and jumping from enemy to enemy, this damage increase helps tremendously in maintaining your combat momentum. Executing, blasting, and executing will keep your combo train rolling. For the character card, I've grown to like Hooligan, 
which increases the damage of strikes by 20 to 60% based on the number of enemies you've killed in the last 30 seconds. At 5 stacks, its limit cap increases from 40% to 120% at max. I don't think I need to explain how much this helps with close quarters effectiveness. And I love it. Can do this the simple way. I prefer to keep it complicated. No dreams and no hope. They've been terminated. Lycus was made for antagonists. His playstyle and weapons all point towards closing the distance and dealing huge damage to raiders. As a Hades faction member, he has the added benefit of a better health pool, as well as stealth cards that can cloak his approach. His ability to take advantage of iframes lets him execute an enemy, line up a shot on the next raider, and then jump to another execution. Make use of ad swarm pushes and follow them to the fight. You can take advantage of panicked raiders. Aggression is a big part of Lycus's playstyle, but knowing when to be patient and let raiders come to you is also crucial to the plan. I'd recommend bringing a reliable weapon like the spinning coin or pepper pot for damage, as long distance fights aren't his strong suit. Moving in slowly and managing your stress meter are going to be very important when fighting stronger team compositions. When dealing with the Lycus antagonist yourself, try separating your group and drawing his attention in multiple directions. The Lycus will typically push up only when their shield's available, so attacking his exposed flank is pivotal, especially when he's bringing heavy hitting firepower to the fight. You're going to have to learn to respect his damage output at higher levels in order to effectively confront him, and that means maneuvering the battlefield efficiently. That's going to be it for this video. I hope this helped you understand the character and his weapons a little better, and I also want to give a huge shout out to the well-known raider Brent Woody for his pointers on how to effectively play Lycus. He spent way more time on this character than I have, and he was crucial in laying down the bone work for this overview. Much appreciated. And to all you raiders who've been joining the channel lately, I want to thank you so much. There's been a huge boost in subscribers, and the fact that we hit 3k in the last month is something I still can't wrap my head around. I also want to thank Mercury Steam for taking the time to point out my channel on their official site. I really appreciate that. I've seen nothing but support from you guys here in the community, and I can't wait to play with you guys all on August 23rd. And as always, I'll see you all on the Broken Planet.